Hello. Let's talk about how to establish a culture of innovation in organizations. We'll talk of culture, we'll talk of innovation, and we'll talk of organizations. Let's start with innovation. The important thing is that uh, innovation is certainly not an upgraded form of a suggestion box scheme. Let's get that clear. A suggestion box scheme is primarily an employee engagement project which brings about cost-cutting measures and improvements by strength of people having deep domain knowledge of doing the same thing over and over again for years. That's good, indeed laudable. However, that's not innovation. Because innovation is something new, something that has not been there before. And it doesn't come about by strength of deep domain knowledge. On the contrary, it comes about on the strength of not having deep domain knowledge. So it's uh, innovation and suggestion box scheme are just simply two different things. What about business? Now, uh, the basic performance engine of business is efficiency. Efficiency comes from repeatability, which comes from doing things as per a set procedure and process. But innovation is doing experimentation of ex trial and error accepting mistakes. It accepts short-term pains for long-term gains. But uh, typical business wants to win every time. As a matter of fact, usually it punishes people for being wrong. So uh, innovation and a typical business are also not normal partners. So what do you do? How do you get innovation? Well, you'd get it by culture. Something really sticky and that really matters. Ephemeral. We are aware that the phenomenal success of Apple is not so much because of the skill of employees as because of the culture of the organization. As also, the phenomenal failure of Lehman Brothers is not because so much of a lack of skill but because of the culture. So culture is the thing. The only thing that can bring about something as ephemeral as innovation. What culture is? Well, it's quite simple. Culture is the pattern of behaviors that are encouraged, discouraged or tolerated over time. It is what is created from the messages that are received about how people are expected to behave. That's important. It has three dimensions. Values, symbols and systems. Value. What is a value? Well, it should be simple. Value is what we value. Every behavior of the top bosses sends a message. And that message is interpreted by subordinates as a reflection of what is valued, which in turn molds the behavior and decisions of others. Now, that's something about contradiction in values. There are contradictions. I value being honest, because of which if there is a flaw in my superior or subordinate or peer, I like to tell him, as it is on the face. But alongside the value of honesty, I also value being nice, of having smooth relationships. And this value prevents me from telling people what I think of them. So the two values, being honest and being wanting uh, flawless relationships, wanting to be nice, are in contradiction of each other. It's always the case. Whichever wins is the value of the organization. Also, values are not observed directly, but by behaviors, by what people actually do. Let's get down to the values specifically of innovation in large organizations. Curiosity, the pursuit of excellence, openness, courage. And how do you get to see them? The behaviors? Experimenting is encouraged. Ideas are challenged. People speak their minds. Mistakes are considered as opportunities for learning. And people ask for help. Then is symbols. Which are nothing but observable events, artifacts and decisions to which people attribute meaning. Which may well be beyond the scope of the original. 
What about the symbols of innovation? Post implementation reviews, quality circles, help meetings, resources allotted for think tanks. Experience is valued and held on to, but simultaneously new blood is also introduced. Physical workplace and use of technology reflecting leading edge practices. And the third is the systems. These are messages that underpin your organization. These work as mechanisms for managing people and tasks. The systems for innovation rigorous measurement in terms of inputs, pilots, tests and small chunks of processes for, for the purpose of improvement. The knowledge management systems are extensive and equally well used. Every form of feedback and communication tools is encouraged. Innovation and idea generation are fused into performance management. What are the levels? There are many levels of innovation. The concept is of ICMM, Innovation Capability Maturity Model. It's a typical maturity model as we see in HR, the ISO, the maturity model of HR. Five levels. Level 1 seeding, designed to achieve early success. Championing, spreading the word, building a network of supporters, introducing some tools, systems and methods. Managing with an innovation process in place, now there's a strong chance that the process will reliably and repeatedly deliver whatever it claims to. Strategizing, transition of innovation from that of a predictable business process to one that is capable of delivering its future success. And interestingly, venturing. Once the organization realizes that success lies not in pursuing what it is naturally good at, but rather by serving the needs of the customers, even when they lie outside your areas of competence. This might well mean spinning off different businesses or venturing. To get on to a journey of change of the culture, we need to understand what is the start point, where do we stand now? This is quite sensing the fuzz because it's very difficult to find out. There are two tools available, the sense maker and the pan sensing. Both are basically social listening tools. Sense maker creates a system whereby stakeholders as decided by you. Tell stories and anecdotes on a theme decided by you. When Ram tells about story of Sham, the story reveals more about Ram than Sham. When your people talk about an anecdote, they reveal not the anecdote, but what they think of it. Similarly, Pansensic is a state-of-the-art social listening tool. It uses smart lenses to read between the lines of discourse to identify clues, decode weak signals and frustrations, locate insights, and improve understanding of what the consumers mean, not just what they say. In this case, the consumer is internal stakeholders. So what your people actually mean, not what they say. This has to be in phases. The journey is long. Phase one is about creating momentum and putting wedges in place, which make it hard to go back. By the end of phase one, you should have a clear picture of what you have and what you want. Equally, you should have a funded plan for change over the next two years. There should be a stake in the ground communication to all staff. The top team should be feeling as if something has shifted in their approach to each other. There must be commitment from the board, the CEO and the key executive for this three years journey. Then it's a phase two, which is about changing the way people think, feel and behave and putting in place the key enablers that will underpin the culture into the future. By the end of phase two, you should you should have observed behavior change in 80% of your senior leaders and 40% of your other managers. As you would have noticed, the expectation is that the change starts from the top. The big tickets items associated with performance management, important performance management should be designed and in place. There must be an epidemic of local initiatives which go far beyond your original plan and new systems should be in place which support new behaviors. Then phase three involves holding the line about the new expectations 
and using peer pressure to accelerate your transformation. At the end of phase three, you should have no one remaining in the organization for more than six months who does not fit the culture's new standards. They got to go. Everyone should be articulating clearly what is so special about this culture and how what they and others do builds and reinforces the culture. There should be an evidence of a competitive advantage in both the customer and employment market based on your culture. Does it look to be too daunting from a simple solution box scheme to full-fledged innovation? It need not be. There are many steps between a solution box to innovation. For example, a better solution box, a theme-based solution box, a simple innovation scheme, and finally a full-fledged innovation scheme. It's doable. In any case, if you wish to have innovation in an organization, changing the culture is the only way to do it. I am a Lokasthana. I love doing this. I understand culture, I understand innovation, and I understand organizational development in organizations. You will find more details about me and my job at innovatorsandleaders.com. Let's get in touch. Thank you.